Hey guys, I've got a video for you today and this one is going to be about real repair um, or real maintenance. Uh, one of the important aspects of fishing is basically knowing your tools. Um, you may know about your lures and your baits, um, the hooks, the lines, uh, the, the rods, okay, the reels, but knowing how they work, how to maintain them so that they work to that original standard or better, or how to repair them if, in case there's a problem with them, it's just a, a very important aspect of fishing that you really should get involved with. Um, being able to maintain or, or repair these on your own is it's huge in that in the cost savings for one. Um, anytime you take anything to get it repaired, you have to pay a, a shop price for it, an hourly rate for it. It's, it's money out of your pocket, okay? And two is it's you being able to diagnose issues will save you in the long run. Um, I have a problem issue with my um, spinning rods because I get a lot of oversplash on my kayak because of the motor. They get doused with salt water constantly. So I'm upgrading or I'm repairing, maintaining these about uh, every two weeks because of that. Because I'm basically just dunking them in salt water every time I go out fishing. But I know that as soon as I feel a little bit of a rough spot, okay, or any type of grinding on it, boom, that rod is, gets put away, that reel gets put away until I can get home and go through it and correct it. My younger days, what I would do, and I'm sure a lot of people do, it gets a little grindy, I grind through it, okay? Um, you dunk it in the water to try to free it up, and you just keep using it because you're on the water, you're fishing, you don't have time to be messing with it. But what happens is, is that you start building up that corrosion, it either wipes out those bearings, or in the case of most of the time here, is the um, pinions and the, uh, the gears get gummed up with salty corrosion, and they basically grind to a stop, but you just forcing them to work will either grind or break off the teeth on the gears, or it'll start warping the bearings and start warping up the, um, the uh, bearings of the uh, uh, clearances on these, and then your reel is sloppy after that. It'll never be the same. So you just knowing that you need to stop, it's not correct, put it aside, being able to take it apart and do it yourself, and you're back on the water either that day or the next day versus taking out to the shop and him telling you how much money you're going to give him and then having to wait for parts and on top of that waiting for the shop. I take this reel, my tarpon reel out to the uh, repair guy right now in the peak of uh, tarpon season and he's going to say, okay, come back in a month and he'll be like, Gah. okay, it's going to be that way. They just get so busy and you have to wait for the parts to get shipped in and so forth. It's just not worth the time. Learn how to repair and replace these yourself. Re learn how to maintain these so you don't run into those problems so much better. Okay. So I'm going to go through is the equipment that I use, which are very basic household equipment that you should have. Um, then I'm also going to go over a very good uh, tutorial website for fixing the majority of the reels that are out there by a probably the one of the top guys in not just us but entire world on repairing reels okay and that guy his name is uh, alan tawny and he's got a website and it's basically it's the go-to place for uh di wires to professional real repair people and including manufacturers go to him a lot of manufacturers have them test reels go through them not just going out and catching fish but by breaking down their reels and taking a look at their components and, and uh, looking at all the aspects to give them a good total review of what he thinks about their reels and they use that in their processing. So excellent website to use as a reference. And of course YouTube has everything, but it's kind of a flip of a coin on who's putting out what and really if they're reliable or not. But anyways, um, tools that you'll need. Um, pair of scissors and that's really is just to snip the line off the fishing line off if you've got it tied to your uh, rod I really don't use them for much beyond that uh, nice little uh, needle nose pliers you're working with a lot of small screws a lot of little small springs little small pieces so this kind of helps out in getting things lined up if you need to I use these which are just kind of like a, a variable ratchet style um, pliers and 
only reason why I use these is that I don't need all my different um, uh, box end and open end wrenches for the one or two screws that are uh, bolts, nuts that are on these reels. Um, you always got to remember nothing on here is torqued down very hard. Everything is just snug and tightened a little bit, just, just beyond hand tightened. So these are more than fine for that. If, you're, if I find something that's been corroded on and it's just really torqued on there, then I'll go get the correct wrench for it because you want the correct uh, tool for the job. Then I have a, a nice uh, little screwdriver set, which the only thing you really need is the small flathead and a small Phillips. And occasionally you'll have some of these will have a larger screw head on there. So you might need a, a larger screwdriver there. You could also do is get the ones with the variable that just have a, um, just the open head and then you just have all the different pieces on it. So you just have one screwdriver and you just change out the tips. Um, then I've got the good old paper towels for wiping up stuff. And then I also, very important is I just have a, my oil rag. Uh, something that I'll spray down the reels with oil or parts with oil and I'll use this to wipe them down because you don't never need to gop things on there and then it's oily yeah but it's also good is at the end is that I can wipe down stuff with it and it leaves a little bit of oil on there helps with corrosion and keeps things clean so don't have to have a nice clean towel for that um, q-tips are always good for reel repair uh, maintenance cleaning up those corners and nukes and crannies for the liquids that I use um, for cleaning I use tap water and uh, uh, dishwasher soap for a majority of it, but for cleaning out the old gunky lube that's been in there and the bearings or in the different uh, compartments or some of the stuff that's got old gunk on it, I use brake cleaner or carb cleaner to really wipe out anything. I mean, if to get it back to the bare bones, this stuff will clean out anything, so I use that sparingly. Um, Instead of WD-40, I use this Bow Shield T9. It's a rust and corrosion protection. It's same thing as a WD-40, which is water dissipating oil, basically what it is. Um, it, uh, it'll lubricate, of course, um, but also what it does is it leaves a film coating on the metal surface or whatever surface, a thin coating to prevent uh, oxidation, corrosion, uh, water attaching to it. So it kind of beads off. It's like it leaves a wax coating on it, so it prevents that. And then I had a little kit where I've got a, a pen real grease and then pen uh, oil on it. I don't use the oil so much since I have the other spray, but I do use the grease there. Lots of different kinds of greases and oils out there. Um, I don't know. I use, like I said, every two weeks I'm going through this, I could probably use uh, wheel packing grease off my car and it'll work fine. It just keeps them oil lubed up and then, but there's some aerospace fancy dancy fishing stuff I like always. Um, use whichever you want. I'm fine with it. No matter to me. And uh, that's all the parts that I use there. Um, you want a nice working surface that has a good surface area. The biggest risk that you have with disassembling and assembling reels is such the small components that are small tiny springs, small tiny screws, small tiny pieces that will hide from you if you have too much clutter and will pop out and kind of disappear on you and then you're, you're kind of screwed because one thing with these reels are is that there's no extra parts, okay? If you have extra parts, you didn't do something right. There is never extra parts, and there is never the ability to put something together missing a part. Everything on here is important. They, they take their time to make everything useful and necessary. So they're not just adding a screw just to get you for that another 50 cents or whatever that screw is supposed to be there, you need to get that screw. And if you pluck it off and the dog eats it, order another one before you try using it because you're just gonna have problems. So that's that there. Um, the other resource that I'm gonna go over is the website, okay? Um, Alan Tani, uh, he's the uh, real repair guru. And I'll be going over that uh, as well. And that's an ultimate resource for real repair. So anyways, check it out and uh, don't be afraid to get involved with uh, knowing your reels. Thanks. Okay, here's the uh, website for Alan Tani. So you can kind of see it's www.alantani.com. Here's his name there. Um, basically it's just a real stripped down basic forum I don't even know how long it's been out but you can kind of see the layout it's not really um, 
all that super fancy or anything. It's just real basic uh, WordPress style uh, format. But um, the first part is just the, the hello to section, some general information about miscellaneous stuff. Then the general maintenance tips as good a lot of good information about the tools and lubricants was a uh, one I read which is very important. Uh, how to check out schematics, general procedures, how to just a general mismatch of uh, information about the uh, real repair. Then you start getting into this part which is the real rebuild tutorials in question. And then what it is is that it's basically broken down by the manufacturers. So you have Accurate, Ambassador, Avid, Iowa. So you, you basically can just go through there and then um, whichever your manufacturer, then it's going to have a breakdown of all the different models that are in here. It doesn't cover every single reel in there, um, but a lot of times you'll find that a certain model is that is the same basic setup as other models in that same manufacturer's brand. Like um, I have a Pen Conflict reel it's basically the same reel as the Pen Battle 2, which is the same as the Pen Battle. They have a few different parts upgrades in them, like a better drag and a little better bearings, but the general assembly is the same, so you can use the same tutorial as a battle for a conflict, so you just have to be able to know that. Um, if you do a web search on your specific model of reel, and uh, on the uh, pull down of all the different options that it brings up and if you see it falling in an Alan Tani website one then you also know that it fits there but otherwise so for example my TLD 30 Shimano um, is one of them so I'll go down to the Shimano Shimano tutorials and questions okay then here we've got we've got the first one is the TLD 15 which is a smaller one which is no the star drag TLD which is no um, the 2025 which is very similar the issue though is that the 30 is a two-speed so it has an extra feature that is kind of important to know and here we go TLD 20 slash 30 so the 30 and the 20 model the 20 is just less line capacity so the general principles and the general styling of it is exactly the same and then the two designation is for the two speed so that is my guy and then um, here's the listing for it um, so it's got the schematics for it and all that is is primarily is um, all the parts listings for everything that makes up that reel so one that you can reorder a part from whatever parts company that you want or two, it gives you the diagram to know how everything is assembled down to every little nitty bolt and screw and spring and so forth. Um, so this will help you too, even if you don't need step by step, you know on the uh, spool, all the different components, all the different bearings, the washers, the, the drags and so forth. And then if you needed to order it because that one little spring got away from you and you got can't find it because the dog ate it, um, you can just look for the corresponding number and it'll tell you what it is. And then you can go to a parts company and basically order that part. Or once we've got that, then you start getting into his diagram breakdown. Um, of the step-by-step -step. so basically he says here's the reel let's get started um, screw by screw he basically walks you through by part number so that screw right up there was whatever part number um, the uh, the dial for the drag which is down here is the key number 151 on that parts diagram the dial spring which is this thing here which is a number 50, 152 if you needed to reorder it blah 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 all the way down it's that detailed so it really should be fairly step by step all of them um, every screw like I said and it's numerical by the parts number how to break it down all the different sections which lube where to lube what lube where not to lube um, and on this one, I know he goes through a, um, a new washer stack system to make it uh, a better, more reliable system there. Um, how to clean up the drags and how much is too much and how much is not enough of the different types of uh, lube to put on them, how to wipe them down. And I think there was, yeah, so like this one on the drag plate, 
um, one of the things that the rule has is that it's got um, spool sloppiness in them and the way you fix that is that you put some masking tape like four layers of masking tape on one of the backing um, drag plates cut it down and that'll take away all that little sloppiness and make your reel even smoother and he shows you those type of upgrade tricks um, so you just cut it out and then it takes away the sloppiness on it how to tighten it up and I think at the end he adds a new repacking bearings um, towards the end I think he puts on a new knob which is one of the bigger uh, better upgrades yeah and then one of his last steps is he upgrades from the old style handle to uh, the more upgraded beefier um, better fitting and so those like I said there's there's how step by step how to just build your real back to factory specs but then he also takes it a bit farther and in this one there's three different basic upgrades to make your your basic reel a lot better okay and then now uh, what's even important after that is that if you read these if there's people that have questions or uh, are not sure about something they'll post up and then he'll respond to them um, if he doesn't respond a lot of times other people will respond to uh, your aunt question with a whatever answer because lots and lots of people from amateur home uh, DIYers to other real professionals use this as a tool to uh, fix up and repair things. Um, it's an international because I see that he takes care of uh, a lot of people from other countries. He's sending out parts to them because it's harder to get parts in other foreign countries. But he'll you he just upgrades the uh, the postage charge and he puts them in the mail and takes care of stuff he has a lot of different odd parts so all that upgraded stuff that you want want to do you just throw an email to him and then uh, he'll set you up with it so really good website um, of course you've got general YouTube to go through um, and use as a reference tool just put in your search engine and go from there problem with YouTube is that the person on the other side who's the putting on the content may or may not know what they're doing so you kind of take the risk of that part of it so anyways uh, hopefully that helps check it out don't be afraid to uh, take a screwdriver to your reels and clean them up um, and uh, watch a little bit as I fumble through my way of uh, getting on these reels alright talk to you later bye